let's start by seeing the inventory module in action in a game that I've been working on. Now I've installed the module and you can see the inventory right here. Now we can click between players and if I select one of the wardrobe that's on a player, we can unequip it and drag it into our inventory. Now this setup on the right here is something I've custom coded for my project, but the inventory module comes with all the panel concept and the drag and drop visual inventory system that you can see here. All of our game modules are meant to be very flexible so that you can create your own inventory and work it the way you want for your project rather than forcing you to do things the way that I'm doing them. Now if I load up this treasure box, you can see the inventory of the treasure and you can click on the objects and drag them around. You can click on other objects to replace what you're holding. And if you hover over an area where you can't drop it, the color will turn red. Now these are custom colors that you can customize. So they can be lighter or different colors entirely, or you can not use them. Pass it to the player by hitting one, two, three, or four, or just drag the object down to the player portrait and click to pass it to that player's inventory. And now we can see the objects are in the player's inventory. In my game, I can drag this over to the portrait, where, where it really has three UI buttons, one in the middle and two on the sides. And if I click one of those buttons while holding an item, I'll call some code that will equip this object onto the character. Again, this is something that I did custom code, but it's easily doable with a flexible system like the inventory and you can set things up however you'd like for your game so they don't have to act exactly like they do in this prototype that I'm working on. So I'm going to pass all of the objects here to player two and fill up their inventory so that we can see what happens when you try to add an item to an inventory when it's already full. So let's just press two to pass all of these over and then we'll open up the treasure box as well and pass these objects over. This mace won't be able to fit, so when I hit 2, he gets selected, and then hitting 2 once again will lo load up the inventory, and you can see that there's no open space. But this does give the player the opportunity to place the item manually and perhaps rearrange things so that the item will fit. Now that we've seen the inventory module in the prototype that I've been working on, let's check out the demo scene that comes with the module itself. Once you install it, just load up the demo scene in the correct folder. Go ahead and press play, and you'll see a very similar demo scene, but very bare bones with white boxes. We have some player portraits down there and some treasure boxes. Go ahead and click one of the treasure boxes to open it. If you click the items, you can drag them around and place them in the different grid spots. And in the scene view, you can see that these are 3D objects set up very similarly to my prototype game. You can pass these to the players by just dragging them to the portraits or press one, two, three, or four to pass to those players. In the small box, we can also pick up an object, close it, open the large box, and drop the object into that box, transferring its ownership. These buttons on the side will add inventory items to this empty inventory for player four. Just clicking these buttons will add it to the inventory. These other buttons will pick up an object as if you're picking them up from the world. You can turn off the console debug logs in one of the scripts, but these are helpful to understand where certain events are happening inside the code. Go ahead and open up one of the lines here into your code editor. This may help you understand what's actually happening behind the scenes when you work with the demo scene. Hopefully you'll find our code to be well commented and easy to understand. Of course, join us on Discord if you have any questions and myself or the community can probably help you out. You can also visit infinitypbr.com and click on the scripting docs to go to our Gitbook page where you can find more detailed instructions and documentation about how to use the module and what all the options in the scripts do. We also often post code examples and other helpful tips. Next, let me demonstrate how to set up the items in a real project. So let's start by setting up the items. 
And to do that, I'm going to follow the instructions on the documentation site. You can get to the documentation site by going to infinityppr.com and then clicking scripting and docs, and that will take you here. Follow down to the inventory section, and let's start with item object setup. So in my project, I've already started to use the items module, and you can see I've set up a variety of starting items, which my characters will be able to start the game with depending on the different skills they select. So the first step is to add world items, and I think I already have that here. So I already have a lot of items set up. This is from an earlier version, and I'm gonna make use of these. I can see that the object is set up right here. So the first step is to add the item world script to each item that's used in the 3D world. All right, the next step is to remind me that since my objects are going to be something that the player can pick up, I'm going to need to make sure that my control script populates the item variable. Um, and that is something I'll do later when I actually implement the control script into my scene. So next I need to create an inventory item uh, for each of these, a, a different version for each object that's an inventory version. Now I have an earlier iteration already set here, so I'm gonna modify these by removing my existing scripts and adding the item inventory script to each of these. Now you'll notice that my objects already have a rec transform attached to them. This is from my previous iteration. Um, I'm going to set up a object from scratch later in the, in the video. So stick around for that or skip ahead in the chapters in the description below. One thing I also have to do is set all of these layers to make sure that they are on the UI inventory layer. And for each one of these, I'm also going to populate the in-game prefab with the world version of each item. In each of my inventory prefabs, I'm going to add a top left object. You can find that in the Infinity PBR game modules, inventory, prefabs, top left. I'm going to leave this turned on for now, and I'm just gonna copy this to make it easier to add it to all of my items. So now it's time to position these properly for the inventory grid. And to do this, I'm gonna use the demo scene that comes with the inventory module. So I'm gonna load up the demo scenes, inventory demo. And first I'm going to turn on the inventory panel and then turn on all of these inventory grid buttons in the inventory area. You'll notice these are checkered right now, which is on purpose uh, and it helps with the setting up of the objects so you can kind of see where they are on the grid. I'm going to collapse that, collapse the area, and load up the inventory objects. You'll notice these are already here. These are the demo objects. And this was set up here for easier placement, but also I like to leave these here in case I need to change something in the future. So for each one of my objects, I'm going to start by bringing in the inventory version of the object. Let's start with this dagger as a child of the inventory objects. Now, if you try to leave it here, it's gonna give you this error with the prefab. So instead, just drag it on top of the inventory objects like so. Next, we need to position the object properly. If you notice, it's currently not visible. So I'm gonna copy the uh, components from these other um, demo objects just to get it closer to where I need it to be. Now, if you're object isn't showing up, check the UI inventory camera, the culling mask, and make sure that uh, UI inventory is selected. The layers are numbered, and so for your project, the actual layer for UI inventory may be different than what we had in the demo scene. And if top left disappears, then load up that prefab and change its layer to UI inventory and then remove, go back to the scene. You'll want to do a similar check for the lighting object. Select inventory light, culling mask, and you want to select UI inventory and no other layer. Now, select your object, and in the scene view, we're going to make it orthographic by either clicking here, or you can click in the middle of the gizmo here and then click these gizmos until you have a front view of the scene. 
and this keeps everything flat which is a very similar view to what you see in the game view so we're going to bring this zoom in here and with my parent object selected future version of me here I actually made a mistake when recording this video and see the middle of the object here how the uh, gizmo is in the middle of the top left cube you actually want that to be in the top left of the top left cube and to do that you want to move the position of the cube itself 0 0.05 on i believe the x and the y value so that when you have the parent object selected the gizmo is in the very top left of the visible cube and that will help you align the object onto the inventory grid bring this up so that the top left cube here is at the top left of the grid it doesn't have to be perfect but precision is pretty important next find your child object and position it where you'd like it to be on the grid itself that includes the position the rotation and even the scale of the object Make a note of the number of grids it takes up, both on the Y up and down, and the X left and right axis. You might want to write it down on a piece of paper or save it in a notes application on your computer. In this case, my dagger is taking up two on the Y and one on the X axis. Then I'm going to turn off the top left object and save this prefab by clicking overrides and apply all. Now I'm going to leave it in the scene here and just turn it off so that if I ever need to come back and refer back to it, uh, it's already here ready for me to modify. So I'm going to do the same with these other objects. Next I'm going to close the inventory panel and save the demo scene. In my items data object. I'm going to click on the dictionaries and set up five specific key value pairs. And those are listed here on the documentation as well. For each of these, except for the object, I'm going to expose the integer. And for the object, I'm going to expose the prefab. Now these only have to be on the item. So I'm also going to turn off the prefix and the suffix. And now clicking over to the items tab, I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and open up all of them and make sure our dictionary is selected. And I'm going to add in the inventory width and the height that I just uh, wrote down, as well as populate the inventory object um, in the inventory object prefab section. Now I'm going to do the curious and the leather vest in just a little bit, setting those up from scratch. But for these ones, I'm going to set them up with the values I just saved. There are three objects that I haven't yet set up. So I'm going to start by copying the small shield and just change the names of these to the new names for the armors I want to create. It's often good practice to child your actual object underneath an empty parent. So we're going to do that now. And now I will create the inventory version of these. And to do that, I'm also going to copy one of the existing uh, objects and just do the same thing for these. No, I'm removing the object but keeping top left there turned off and then I'm going to bring in the world version as a child and then making sure I change the in-game prefab to the correct object as well. To position these I'll open the inventory panel again, make sure that all of the inventory grid buttons are turned on under inventory area and then I'll bring the curious and leather vest inventory objects as a child of inventory objects and I will copy the rec transform on one of the other objects and then paste it onto these new objects as well now position them about where they need to be and in case I you forgot like I did make sure you select the layer and click the UI inventory and say yes change children for both of the objects. If the objects are similar in size, you can select both and modify both at the same time. Once you have those positioned, be sure to set apply all on the override for the prefab and then turn those off. If you get into a situation where the object is cut into the grid, you can bring it forward 
the Z position will be set when these get instantiated. So bringing it forward will help you visualize what it'll actually look like, especially if you want to do anything like rotating the object um, or rotating the object to get a different angle. Now back on my items data object, I'm going to set these values as well. And to clean up the demo scene, I'm going to turn off all the inventory grid buttons. I won't delete these because I will use these later for more setup. And turn off the inventory panel. Now before I integrate this into my game, I can actually test this using the demo scene here. To do so, I'm going to click on the data object and replace the items demo object with the items for my project. Now just press play on the demo scene and open one of the boxes and you'll see your objects in the demo scene and you can inter interact with them as you would with any other of our demo objects, including passing them to the players and seeing them in other inventories. You can also equip and unequip and get full interaction of the demo scene with your own objects. If you get this error when you try to throw or drop an object into the world, it means you just don't have a rigid body on the object. So stop the demo scene, go into the object, and make sure you add on a rigid body. You'll also want to add a collider, either a mesh collider or a primitive collider as well. Another common problem is that when you open up an inventory, some of your objects will fall. And that's because the inventory item has the rigid body activated. So go back into your inventory objects. And if you set them up like me, you use the uh, world version as the, as the prefab child of the inventory object. And just go ahead and remove the rigid body and turn off all of the colliders. Don't update the, prefab, the world model prefab, however, and now your objects will act as you expect. And that's how you set up your items for the inventory module. Now let's start a new box from scratch. Well, not quite from scratch. We're going to copy one of the existing boxes and modify it for our purposes. So again, I'm going to reference the scripting documents, which you can access from infinitypbr.com. And in this case, we see that the instructions say that the inventory assumes that there's always going to be a player inventory and then this other inventory. And we can see that in the demo scene itself where the player portraits load up the player inventory and these other treasure boxes open up some other inventory. There can only be one other inventory open at any given time. So the first thing to do is make a copy of the box inventory panel and rename it and move it somewhere in your project. And the prefab can be found in the main prefab outside of the demo folder. We're gonna call this demo box because I'm going to delete it after this video. So the next thing we need to do is update the number of grid items or grid spots on the X and Y value. I'm gonna make this a wide but not too tall box. So with the demo box selected, I'll scroll down into the panel component bring this down a little bit and I'm going to make it have uh, maybe just four rows and ten columns or maybe just three rows. So the next step here is to open up the prefab and select the inventory area. So let's open up the, the prefab itself by double clicking on it and click on the inventory area. This is where items will actually be spawned inside the system. On the grid layout group component, we're going to check the cell size. Now in the demo scene, we're using cell size 100 by 100, but in my project, I've reduced that to 80 by 80. You can set this up to any square number, uh, large numbers or small numbers, depending on how much granularity you want in your grid system. Very large grid spots or very small grid spots. And we need to make sure our final width and height of this rec transform is the multiple of the cell size and the number of grid spaces we have. So in this case, 300 by 1000.
and you can see the size of the grid is now updated right here. That's the entire inventory area, and there's going to be three grids top to bottom and 10 left to right. In our demo scene on this button, you'll also want to make sure the rows and columns are the same here as they are for your box itself. Otherwise, you're going to get some errors like I did down here. Now my scripting documentation has some examples of the code I used in my custom scripts in order to access these, this box. You can make use of this, copy it and, and use it as you'd like, but for this demo, I'm simply going to copy one of these UI boxes and we'll move it over to the side and we'll just call this uh, demo box. The demo scene and these buttons can help you understand how to set up your own project to work with this system. When we click the button, you can see that the got clicked method is called on the box manager demo script. We see that the got clip will first set up available items and then the panel manager will set the other panel to a new instance of this prefab. And if that doesn't exist, for some reason, we're going to just return. And then we're gonna set up the other panel using the panel manager itself. Now the setup available items will only be called once if it is not already set up. And this will basically set the actual physical UI grid spots onto the inventory area. It will then also add the items to the grid itself and do all the setup for the items to be on the different spots. You can see right now that the Y size is zero. This is what's going to be set up during that one method call. Now the box manager is a demo script. I expect that you probably will either modify this heavily or use your own script for your project. But in this script, we need to set the box inventory prefab. So instead of the small box prefab, we're going to bring in the demo box prefab. Now this is the prefab that will be instantiated when we click this demo box button. Now, if we press play and open up the demo box, we can see some items have been placed here and the grid is smaller than the other two boxes. And each one we load up has different items. Now, if we bring this item, into our demo box, which is quite small, you see we won't be able to actually place it because the spear is too big to place into this object. Now, as a reminder, the game module system is intended to be very, very flexible and not force you to operate your game in any way, shape or form. The inventory, of course, is a visual drag and drop inventory system. And if that's the kind of thing you want for your game, then this provides everything you need to get what's seen here in the demo scene working for your game. But it is expected that you would probably need some custom coding in order to do the full integration for your system whether it's a 2D game, 3D game, whether you're using treasure boxes, player inventory, or even using the inventory system to allow a player to place items in a drawer or on top of a counter or a bed, this system will help you do that, but it does require some custom coding. Hopefully this demo scene with the debug logs over here can help you understand what happens when an item is, or a box is opened, or an inventory is opened, or an item is clicked and put into the item held area, and then pass to a player portrait. Come check out the Discord where you can join the community and click on the game module section to ask questions. Myself or someone else should probably be able to help you out. You can find the Discord by going to infinitypbr.com. If you do purchase this package, thank you very much for your support. Come join us in the community, and I hope that this helps you build your game successfully and quickly.